Hey guys, how's it going? It is your boy, Big Blue Drew 97 here, coming at you with a different video angle, a different beard, but the same old My Hero Academia Vigilantes Manga Chapter 85 review. Yes, we are back with My Hero Vigilantes. It has been like, felt like a month since I've been able to review and read this chapter, read this series. So I'm so excited to do that. Even to the point where I changed my entire room, my setup, and my facial hair. Ooh, it feels so smooth. But yeah, uh, today we're going to be talking about and reviewing Vigilantes. And let's just say it is going to be a really fun and interesting, well, not necessarily fun, but it's an interesting chapter. And it sets up um, a, a lot of the uh, potential climax of this series. Uh, and without out the way uh, i also like to ask y'all to subscribe to my youtube channel a uh, big blue drew 97 as well as leave a uh, comment down below on uh what did you think of this chapter and where you think that this series is going as well as leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it and now without the way let's get right into the review so we start off the cover with the cover page of a uh, namasa and by the way the chat title of the chapter is inquiries and this is very important to what's going on in this chapter is because we have namasa who is the detective and what is what's going on in this chapter is talking about immediately what went on with the previous chapter what happened with koichi what happened to rat uh, moyoru soga Basically, what this chapter is, is the aftermath of when a hero takes down a villain. And because Namasa is a police officer, a lot of this chapter is going to be the questioning of potential suspects to try to get information on potentially why Pop Step did what she did, uh, her possible accomplice, as they uh, allude to in this chapter, as well as uh, where Koichi is, because from what was seen in the past chapters and what is even inferred about this chapter uh many people believe that the crawler koichi may have been responsible for the deaths and the destruction of uh as well as uh potentially leading a uh, pop step to destroying and being a villain so a lot of that comes up and when it comes to this cover page it shows namasa uh being serious putting on his uh necktie straightening it with his suit and tie so it just shows that he is serious and that he's not playing any games and so from namasa in the cover page we get to see our three lovable guys we see a uh, moiru we see wrapped and we see soga and uh from what it seems of how these panels are layered uh they are being questioned by namasa and giving their understanding and their explanation of what went on uh, during the time where Pop Step was a villain and all the destruction was going on, and we kind of get like their like views on it, where you have a uh, Moyoru who's like, oh, I don't know really what happened. It was just a coincidence that we found her. Uh, I'm telling the truth as he looks like he's like lying, and then you have Wrapped who's like, ah, ha, ha, ha. oh, we were just testing out this little uh, landing pad, and all the villagers came here, and it was just a shock as he's laughing, uh, trying to play it off. But then you have Soga who he doesn't respond immediately and from where we see Soga that is where we cut to the main uh gist the main like part of the uh inquiries between Namasa and the crew because Namasa begins talking about how uh they're treating a uh, pop step as a villain and, and we get and how he wants Soga to cooperate with him but Soga for the first part will not cooperate with him unless like he knows exactly how she's doing because soga asked her about the surgery and how she's doing and here's where we learned that uh, namasa was told by midnight to give them a report on how she was doing at the moment so from here we get a flashback to uh, namasa going to a facility and what is interesting about what is going on and it kind of ties into the reasons for why he's questioning them and why this chapter needs to exist is because we see him he's going through security even though he's in a hospital it's very strict he has to do like a handprint he has to get body checked he has to remove his weapons and all of that go through a body check before he even meets midnight and uh, 
uh, Pop Step, uh, who we're going to do a uh, Kazuha, who we're from now on going to call uh, Kazuho, and he meets her mother at midnight, and uh, unfortunately, uh, Kazuho's mother is crying, but you have Namasu who's like trying to understand like why is it a uh, hospital so secured? This isn't really like a normal hospital. And Midnight confirms like why this is going on. Uh, she confirms that yeah, this is a normal hospital. This is a special facility for like villains. How she got a tip from certain individuals that potentially Pop Step's life is in danger because of someone else. So she's being isolated from uh, everyone else in a special facility. And she even brings up the idea of like, yeah, with like what they said, like she may need to be moved, but she's not in the state or in the condition to be moved. And this is coming from Midnight as we see uh, why she believes that because we see uh, Kazuho, we see Pop Step. She has many things tied up to her body. Uh, she doesn't look like she's in the best condition. It doesn't even look like she can move and even in the next page we get a better understanding of why she can't do that because she went through extensive surgery and she even had the parasite be removed from her eye so you know yay her eye is no longer being infested but they also tell us that uh, she's gonna have long-term effects affecting her so this just shows that she is not going to come out of this like all hunky-dory. She's not going to be like, oh, nothing happened. Everything's fine. Everything's awesome. No, she's going to have damage from this in the same vein as how a Knuckle Duster's a daughter uh, suffered like lasting damage, try having to recover. But from here, we have Namasa who's actually getting really into like the nitty gritty of it and how like he talked, like how he said that Kazuho, Kazuho, yeah, Kazuho, how uh, her life's going to be different and how, um, the boys helped save her but he wants to know where a uh, koichi aka the crawler is like what he is doing because he eventually says that people think that he is a main suspect in the crime and he wants to have koichi come in to clear his name but unfortunately soga isn't having that he's like oh no i can't tell you where he is uh, it'll be wasting time we got to stop the guy that's trying to kill a uh, pop step trying to kill a uh, kazuo and from here, we have Namasa, who just gets visibly upset. He is mad. He's like, but we need to know. We need to make sure that he's innocent. And Soga's like, yeah, but there's a chance that you may bring him in and arrest him. And, like, he's our powerhouse. We can't do that. And, he's, and then you have Namasa's like, oh, come on. We can't do this. We cannot rely on your vigilanteism. It's not the time for that. And Soga, he snaps back. And he's like, oh, really well you know this probably wouldn't be happening if y'all actually did y'all jobs where you would think that namas would be like oh what are you talking about we are doing our jobs but next rally he stops and pauses and he doesn't say anything else also we see the little kitty officer in the back yay but something i want to talk about when it comes to this part of it is that it does make sense because when you really think about not just in like this ideas of like my hero academia but even solely in vigilantes you have these officers who are supposed to do their job to uh capture the villains or like arrest people but in actuality especially in the story the vigilantes have done more to like arrest these villains heck the vigilantes are the ones that basically took down the trigger like drug trade to help to take that down and that the reason why I bring this up is because we get a certain detective reintroduced into the story detective uh, Tanuma who if you remember correctly he uh, the last time we saw him is when he was talking to knuckle duster about taking down like the main facility for the trigger drug so we see that he's reintroduced into the story and now he's going to take over for uh, talking to Soga and this makes a whole lot of sense because when it comes to their conversation uh, he brings up that oh yeah y'all boys I remember y'all y'all were like victims of this uh, drug crime of trigger yeah I remember y'all y'all play like a real crucial part in that and Soga is playing it off like it's nothing and he's like yeah 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 as we refer back to Tanuma who is looking at Soga and he's like huh you're reminding me of a certain old pal of mine and from here we get more confirmation of who that person, who Soga reminds him of. It reminds him of Knuckle Duster, which makes sense because Soga basically served as like the pseudo underling for Knuckle Duster. 
And from this conversation that we have between Soga and Tanuma, we get a kind of like deeper understanding of how Knuckle Duster viewed society as a whole through an analogy that Soga gives where Knuckle Duster viewed the world as a sock. And I think this was a really apt understanding of the world because more so it goes into it he talks about how when it comes to socks they rip open and when it comes to socks you could always try to throw out it out throw out the sock and put on a new pair of socks but it just still doesn't stop the fact that that sock is going to get a hole and it basically means that socks aren't perfect in reference to how the world itself is not perfect and just throwing out another pair of socks and putting on a new one doesn't solve the problem of there being a hole in the sock. Meaning that just throwing away the problems does not have be, is not the solution to the world itself. So Knuckle Duster comes up with an idea of like how he views it. That instead of just throwing away another pair of socks, his solution is to put another pair of socks on it. And you may be thinking, well, that's not a great idea either because you're just putting like a band, like putting a bandage on like a wound. Like it doesn't heal the hole itself. But from how I view it, I view that as really like, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Because yes, you, even though you're putting on a new sock or you're covering up like the faults of the world, the hole is still there. You still know that the hole is there. You can still feel it. And as more holes build on the outer end of the sock, you keep on putting more and more socks on, the holes still remain, but the world is still intact. Which can be summed up as, even though there are problems in the world, it's not right to ignore it, but it's not necessarily covering it up, but you're like making the world whole again, but you're not forgetting about the holes. The holes are still there. You still know that they're there, but you're just trying your best because there's no way for it to be perfect. And the best way to do is just not forget that the holes are there. So you don't throw them out. You keep them and you just add another layer of sock on it. And I think that's a really cool idea of viewing the world, especially in the world of My Hero Academia, where not just in the village Atlantis, but in the canon of My Hero Academia where everyone knows that the world is messed up where it's very imperfect but people view it as this perfect world so when a problem is to occur they just throw it out instead of rec realizing it and thinking about it more and I just like this idea because I think it's a truly like good representation of the world itself in My Hero Academia and even with that even uh, Tanuma even like somewhat agrees with that because he immediately lets all of the kids go to the like anger and like just detestment of uh, Namasa himself. So now Namasa is questioning why uh, Tanuma is like letting them go, and Tanuma is like, ah, yeah, you, you don't think that that kid is like where it's like sh like swayed me or anything? Nah, nah, nah. That that has nothing to do with it. Yeah, but you know, just to, just don't tell like anyone like about what he said to me and like what I did. Just just keep this between us. So Tanuma says like that it really didn't get to him, but it actually did because like I said, he worked with Knuckle Duster. He worked with Vigilantes. He knew what Knuckle Duster was doing and still let it slide. So it makes sense that he would do the exact same thing to Soga because he sees like the ideals of Knuckle Duster in him, so he lets them go. But then you have now Masa, who's like, you're letting them go, but I'm still gonna keep an eye on them. And then from here, we get kind of like a better explanation of immediately what happened after uh, Pop Step uh, was destroyed everything after she escaped, where we have the newsman who's talking about, yeah, many heroes died, there was a whole lot of destruction, uh, some people received metal condition that were hurt in the area, and like all of this occurred because of the number two hero, but two factions uh, popped up. And those two factions were, yo, Endeavor like took down someone who was like underage, a minor, that's not cool, while the other side is like, yeah, but did you see the damage that she was doing? She stopped him, she stopped that person from doing any more damage. So they begin to, uh, within the news, they begin to question like, 
whether or not what Endeavor as a number two hero did was good or bad, and two fronts were created from that. And from here, we see Koichi is watching this, and he is also beginning to question like his like part in like being a hero, being a vigilante. And he comes to like a realization of all of the villains he has fought up in the past, where a lot of them have threatened to like kill him, or who, and he has come to a realization that he has like a talent of like making people mad at him. But even when like he was in these situations, he never really thought that they would even like kill him. And even when he just talked to them, he was able to like talk them down and bring them to a point where like they say, "Oh, we're gonna kill you." But it's more of like, "Oh, he was just using like bluster. He was just like using hyperbole. He wasn't actually gonna kill him." But then he thinks about Endeavor, and particularly he thinks of like Two O'Clock, who actually wants to kill Koichi and Koichi understands that and he begins to remember what two o'clock said he's like I'm gonna kill her and then I'm gonna kill you and now he's questioning whether or not he could actually stop two o'clock so from here we have Koichi who's questioning whether or not he can stop two o'clock to Koichi, Rapt, Moyoru, and Soga coming up with a plan to stop two o'clock so you know it's a cool juxtaposition juxtaposition between Koichi questioning himself but then still creating a plan to stop him where the plan just sums up as yo uh, we're gonna set up checkpoints to prevent any uh, crazy people or anyone from coming in that is not supposed to and uh, from there we also have like uh, Moyoru who's like well he's like a psychopath right like sure we have these checkpoints set up but what happens like when we actually meet him and he's like Oh, we'll just run away. And uh, everyone's like, oh, thank gosh, that's cool and all. So their plan is very basic. It's like they'll set up a checkpoint. They'll uh, screen anyone that comes in and out. And if, like, they recognize, like, the psychopath or they have an idea of who that is, uh, they may uh, try to report to the police or just make sure that he never gets to the building to potentially kill Pop. Now, will this plan work? Well yes and no because going on to the next page uh we see that they've set up this checkpoint they see a repairman uh coming into the building they stop him he was like oh what are you doing i'm just here for an ac job like by the way i don't even look like y'all affiliated with the hospital but suddenly the uh dude's toolbox breaks open and they find that there's a camera and they say that oh he's with the media so setting up this checkpoint yeah it it works they prevented, like, a media person from going into the hospital to possibly question Pop Step, which, you know, this just shows how scummy the news network is. Because, first of all, she's a minor, so she can't really get on television without, like, parental, like, a advisories. But it just shows, like, just how cruddy, like, the news is to try and sneak into a hospital to get a scoop of a child that is in, like, horrible, like, conditions could potentially die. So... Their plan technically works, but something I'm going to talk about after this is, but to sum it up, I don't think that it will work against 2 o'clock, though. Because from here, we see that Koichi has, was the one that fired off on the uh, repairman and uh, opening the box. And from here, the last part of the chapter, we have him questioning like what he's going to do and how he has to get serious. Because 2 o'clock is seriously going to try to kill her. So now he has to get serious too, inferring that he may have to take lethal action against 2 o'clock as the chapter ends. And let me just say this, this was a very interesting chapter, uh, something that I never really thought uh, I would actually get from My Hero, Ac Vig My Hero Academia Vigilantes, because when it comes to Vigilantes, it's very dialogue heavy in comparison to even like my hero academia and i think this chapter like pretty proves like how dialogue heavy it is because there wasn't really a whole lot of action in it there was a lot of exposition needed exposition but it is framed in a way of a detective uh, questioning a suspect 
and the suspects just so happen to be individuals that we know. So it's a good way to get that exposition out, not just to the readers, but also uh, to the people in the story, as well as to put like each one of them on sort of like even ground so that if there's information that uh, Soga knows, he could potentially give it to Namasa which apparently he does not, but there are information that Namasa has from Midnight that the uh, gang needs to help like implement their plan to try to save Hotstep. So that was very interesting and I really enjoyed how the exposition was portrayed. As well as when it comes to their plan, it seemed to have an aspect that works when it comes to like normal people trying to get in like the media it works for them and preventing them from getting towards pop step but i do not believe that uh it will work with two o'clock because in the chapter it is alluded that someone has been trying to infiltrate the facility which is why they want to move pop to a more secure area but unfortunately they're unable to do so because of her condition so i believe what is possibly going to happen is that he's gonna find a way in not necessarily through the entrance but he may create his own entrance or something to that a degree or he may confront Koichi on the roof or somewhere as a way to scare him before infiltrating the hospital because I do not think that he's going to go through the front entrance or if he does he's probably going to do a whole lot of damage to the crew and then Koichi would have to uh, follow him chase him into the hospital and then they will have a battle within the hospital which could lead to potentially Koichi uh maybe failing to save Popstep or even Popstep just getting hurt even more but it could also lead to her just waking up and then them somehow escaping leading to the climax of the story between Koichi as the crawler versus two o'clock so a lot of things could potentially happen and this chapter alludes to that but overall I think this was a really good chapter even though it was exposition heavy uh, they did it in a very interesting way through the uh, veil of a detective interrogating a perp as well as you get to uh, get a reintroduction to uh, someone that uh, played a crucial role in the uh, early parts of my Hero Academia Vigilantes when they were beginning to be vigilantes as well as to get a better understanding of Knuckle Duster's ideals of the world and how they uh, could fit in not just in vigilantes but also in the original My Hero Academia canon. Overall, really did enjoy re reading this chapter. Can't wait for the next chapter to come out. Unfortunately, My Hero Academia is on break this week, but it will be back next week. So hopefully I'll be able to review that then. And hopefully I will get back on a continuous schedule. And hopefully you enjoyed this video. You enjoyed watching it. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Big Blue Dream 97 As I said, leave a like, leave a comment. What did you like about this chapter? What do you think is going to happen next chapter? I think we're going to get more uh, continuation of this story. Uh, I think that two o'clock is going to make his grand uh, re-debut to try and attack Popstep and Koichi will have to uh, go after him. He's going to break, break through the checkpoint into the hospital and Koichi will have to go after him. That's what I think is going to happen. But what do you think? Uh, do all of that cool jazz and hopefully I'll be able to catch you in the next video. Goodbye for now.